Hey guys, before we get to the uh, bonus episode this week of the Joshi Pod, I do want to address the messages that Arisa Hoshki posted on social media that I guess were triggered by another instance of cyberbullying and blows my mind. You know, we just lost Hana over something stupid like this. And we have another instance where somebody has been cyberbullied and we're taking down a notch, taking down too many notches. You know, it, it doesn't register in my mind that people actually send negative hateful things to somebody they don't really know you know it's this is make-believe this is pretend this isn't real life you know your life is real life their life is real life that stuff in between is not real life you know what what we see on tv what we see on social media that's that's not real life that's what that's wrestling that's acting that's entertainment you know if, if it's alexa bliss or sasha banks or you know pick a celebrity pick a male celebrity pick a female celebrity it's never okay to send them a message saying hateful things to them. Unless they've done something hateful to you personally, then there's no reason for you to send a message saying hateful things to them. Um, again, it, it just doesn't register in my mind to ever do that. So I, I have a hard time understanding why other people do that. Uh, I understand there's people with, with mental disorders or developmental disabilities that are online a, as well. We, we interact with them every day. I do a lot of volunteer work with people with developmental disabilities, and, and I know they have social media accounts. And uh, they're not always going to say the right thing and going to, you know, rub people the wrong way. And they don't have the worst intentions, but that's how it comes out. I don't know if that was the instance this time or not, but guys, we got to find a way. I don't have an answer, but we got to find a way to stop this. We got to find a way to to cut those people out of our lives. Social media is such a wonderful thing. You know, I love interacting with all you guys and, you know, and I, and I hope you enjoy interacting with me. And it's... It's, it's a, such a fun place. You know, I went to high school, part of my high school in Europe, and, you know, I reconnected with some people through social media. And my high school, te- you know, I went to high school here in California as well, and I, I got to reconnect with some people there as well. So there's some very positive things, you know, about social media, but it's also a, a turd-filled cesspool sometimes, too, of just full of negativity. And we, we have to clean it up. We have to police ourselves. We have to block people that don't bring positivity to us. We need to block the people that bring the hate. There's, there's no room for that in this world right now. We've got enough uh, shit going on right now in this world that we don't need, you know, somebody sending a hateful message to a wrestler, to an entertainer, to a singer, to what, whatever it is, to anybody. A uh, wrestler, you know, a normal person like you and I, you know, they don't need to send hateful messages to anybody. We need to find a way to police this. We need to find a way to stop this. We need to spread more love online and less hate. I see a whole lot of love out there, guys. I haven't gotten a whole lot of hate from you guys, and uh, and I appreciate that. You know, and and if there's those people out there that can't stand themselves and they have to post something, my DMs are open. You know, I'm fat. I'm old. I'm ugly. I'm a big target. A big target. Come get me. Let me have it. Leave them alone. Guys, it takes as much effort to be a decent human being as it does to be an asshole. Let's be decent human beings. Let's get those negative people out of our lives. The block button's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Let's use it more often. Spread love. Fuck hate. I love you all. I've rambled enough. Let's love each other and enjoy this bonus episode of The Joshi Pod. Hey guys, bonus episode of the Joshi Pod. I like to have my friends on every once in a while, and also Jay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to start with the rib. That's all. I'm gonna give you a hard time from the get go. No, guys. Uh, uh, after yesterday, like I think I got ribbed enough from the three of you guys. <laughs> So I like to have my friends on the podcast and I like to have other podcasters on the podcast because um, these guys have influenced me in positive ways, have uh, inspired me in positive ways. And I like to introduce uh, my friends to you guys so you guys can be friends with my friend on the phone right now or on the phone. Who, who talks on the phone anymore? My friend on Skype right now, Mr. Who talks on Skype? It's called about a... My buddy Jay Silver from the Smack It Down podcast. Uh, he's from Texas, so be be uh, aware of his accent. You guys might not be able to understand him. <laughs> Jay, welcome to the Joshi Pod. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm from Texas now. Am I? That's a new one. <laughs> all, all, accents, all accents sound the same to me. It's, it's not a, a plain old uh, 
California, no accent, and every accent sounds the same. But like, I'm not even close to Texas, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're ripping me just for the sake of ripping me now. Oh, 100%. <laughs> 100% enough. I am, yes. So, Jay, uh, you are from, obviously, uh, Tokyo, Japan. By your, I can tell by your accent. That uh, no, I'm kidding. No, Jay is from Australia. Australia, Australia, uh, Australia, Australia. I don't know. Whichever way you decide to say it's fine, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what part of Australia? Are you from? What part of Australia are you from, Jay? Um, I'm from New South Wales. I uh, was, yeah. Don't really want to give more that away, but yeah, I'm from New South Wales. What's your street address? Uh, go screw yourself. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I, I have guys on and ladies on to discuss about their their love of wrestling, and uh, I'm also going to get into how Jay started uh, the Smack It Down podcast and how he got into podcasting. But Jay, what are your some of your early uh, life memories of professional wrestling in general? So some of my early life memories of wrestling in general was being terrified of the Undertaker, but I think we've all been there at some stage. Because, like, dude, because, like, this big, tall son of a bitch comes out dressed all in black, like, demonic sort of presence to him. He's scary, and he's definitely someone that you got to remember. So, in Australia, was it mostly WWE that you had? Yeah, there really wasn't. I, I don't even remember if WCW was on TV here. Like, that's... Yeah, like, I, I honestly don't remember. I'm sure it was, but not where I was, if that makes any sense. What, what year are we talking about when you first started watching wrestling? So when I first started watching like properly, it was about 2007 and stuff, but I have memories from my older brother who watched uh, sporadically. Like um, one of the earliest things I remember was the King of the Ring that uh, Kurt Angle won mm. in the finals against Rikishi. King Kurt. King Kurt indeed. And that's just like one thing that stands out in my head from like early wrestling memories. So you were kind of just tag- tagging along with your brother and kind of just watching what he was watching? Yeah, that's usually what you do as a kid. It's also how I learned about a lot of things that I shouldn't know. Because <laughs> that's what family's good for, am I right? <laughs> I had three older sisters, so I, I was I was screwed. Ah, well, I have two older sisters, um, and I was usually the punching bag of the family, so that's just how it goes. Always been the youngest, and... Always getting the short end of the stick. Oh, I was I was the baby too, so I'm the youngest as well. So, what did you do? What, what kind of what did you do to fill your time? If you weren't watching wrestling when you were young, what kind of things did you do to to pass the time? Or what what, what interested you when you were younger? Uh, I used to play hockey and some other sports. But now I don't. Um, friggin', I. So hold on, hold on, hold on. Hockey, hockey means a lot of things. In... Uh, like turf hockey, grass hockey. Okay. Okay. Like, Not a whole lot of ice hockey going on down in in, in Australia. Um, no, it's funny how that works. Hey, like, do you think Australia would be placed to have ice hockey? Because <laughs> it doesn't seem like that to me. We have ice hockey teams in San Diego, but that's more yeah, recently. But... Yeah, yeah. No, but you you play like field hockey is what you played. Yeah, for a little bit. But like, uh, besides athletics, I mean, what what kind of things interested you? Like comic books or any, anything like that. Uh, mostly games, dude. Like, had a PlayStation. Actually, I had an Atari there at one stage, too. Like, that's how freaking old that was. So you you go on the uh, Red Leaf retrocast and talk yeah. about talk about video games as well. Correct. Um, there over there with JD, who is also another good guy. Um, we have the monthly modern gaming podcast, but he, he also has the retro stuff as well. Well... What was it about video games that captured your imagination? Um, mostly just the stories, dude. Like, you can tell stories in a game that, like, you can't always translate over well to other forms of media, like whether it's in book form or whether it's in movie form. Like, there's just something about being able to control, like, what happens. If so that what, makes what, any sense to you at it all. It does. Now, what, what's the, the like, first-person shooter games kind of thing, or what, what, would, what did you play? Um... I played a bit of everything as a kid, dude. Like, one of the games I got right into, like, way back in the day was Warcraft 1 and Warcraft 2, which is a um, uh, real-time strategy. Mm. And beating that as, like, a friggin' seven-year-old, that first game was kind of hard. 
Especially when, like, your brother and, like, your father, like, know the cheat codes and they, like, won't give them to you. Is that a douchebag? <laughs> so as you got older, what, what sort of, I mean, what sort of, oh, actually, let me, hold on. Let me, let me I got to ask you a question. I've not talked to really gamers from other countries before. So uh, you know what, ahead. you know what Madden is, right? In the U.S., like the, the football yeah, game? Yeah, the, the NFL game. Yeah. So do they have, like game specifically for australia like aussie rules football for the ps3 or you know uh cricket for the ps3 things like that there, there was um i know that on the ps4 at the moment there's a afl game i'm not sure if it's any good i don't want to play it i don't play very many sports games but um you know they're a thing it's just i'm not sure if they're good because i haven't played them in a while like the last bloody afl game i played was maybe 10 years ago and it was it was acceptable. It was possible, but it's not something that I would go back and play. Yeah, I was just curious about how local sports to local markets and like cricket's pretty popular down there as well. I used oh, to I freaking boring. I back when I was living in Europe for those three years and I watched the BBC is all I had to watch and I watched a lot of cricket. I had a cricket game for my Commodore sixty four. Oh God, how did that go for you? It was awesome. I loved it because I knew who all the people were, so it was pretty cool. That does actually make it sound like it could be an interesting experience because I'm like, some of the cricket games I've played, like they're fine, but they just got really repetitive. Oh, yeah, a lot of sports games do. And also, like, the only good form of cricket is 2020 cricket, which takes like two hours to actually watch, and then you're not stuck there for like a whole day. I don't even know what 2020 cricket means. So, 2020 cricket is uh, just 20 overs, so like six. I'm going to call them pitches or bowls Mm -hmm. um, per side. So then like it literally just makes the game go a lot quicker. And yeah, it's pretty much just like a two, three hour game versus the three or four day test matches, whatever it is. Yeah. So like, it's actually watchable. Yeah. Better for TV. For sure. Like them, it's just, they've got a thing here called the big bash league, which is essentially, it's just like a, an Australian tournament, Um, like a couple teams from each state. And yeah, they just do that usually over the summer. And I go for the Adelaide Strikers. I'm gonna have to look them up. They have uh, they have professional baseball down in, in Australia now too. My buddy who was down there uh, brought me a hat back from one of the teams. It was pretty cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, now you know. Baseball's not, baseball's not really on my list of things to watch. I once again I find that kind of boring, just like cricket. The next time we're in, or we're, we're when we meet in Tokyo, okay, I'm gonna take you to a baseball game. It's gonna change your mind. Are we going to go watch the cops? Uh, we're going to watch whoever we can go see. The Giants, the Chiba Latte Marines, the Bay Stars, whoever it is. But you, it's going to change your mind when you go to a Japanese baseball game. I'll be the judge of that. I guarantee it. I'll be the judge of that. You're going to want to go back the next day. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, ga- so gaming has been something that's been pretty consistent with you your whole life? Yeah. Do you, do you consider that your passion? Um, one of my passions. So is is gaming something you'd want to do? So you, you like talking about it on a podcast as well. I mean, is there, is there something more you think you can do at, with the gaming? Or you, you enjoy it just to be your hobby? I enjoy it just to be my hobby. Yeah. Because like sometimes... You, like, when you're, like, when you do something for work and that sort of thing, like, it's... You get very sick of it very quickly. Mm-hmm. See, it's more so something like that I can just do to friggin' just kill time, relieve stress, that sort of thing. So do you look down on people that play Fortnite? <laughs> I've never touched it. <laughs> so that's a yes? Well, I, I guess I can't really judge it if I haven't played it, but at the same time, like, <laughs> it looks freaking boring. <laughs> it's pretty repetitive. I've, I've played it. I won't lie to you. Ah, so I can look down on you then. How good. Finally, have something to like a lord over you. <laughs> what that I have won at Fortnite? Have you though? Have you really? It's a good time. I don't believe you. Yeah, I don't play it anymore, so it's all right. Yeah, so well, I mean, if it was good, you would still be playing it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, are you an <laughs> Xbox? Are you an Xbox guy or a PS guy? I'm whatever guy. I've got everything pretty much. Do you have any, like, any, okay. like, any obscure, like, systems at all? Um, 
not on me at the moment. Like I used to have an Atari and stuff, but like those things are more so retro than obscure. I know that <laughs> like I know the JD has got a 3DO, which um, oh boy, that's a thing. That's pretty cool, actually. One of my friends when I was growing up had a Neo Geo, which is pretty awesome. I want to get a um. I wouldn't mind like picking up like either an N-Gage or something because that'd be kind of fun Just playing something obscure that's like not owned by everybody. <laughs> Are you old enough to remember arcades? Um, <clears throat> no. Okay. Because, yeah, I mean, we had arcades and even at grocery stores. So when I was a kid, we used to have like asteroids or dig dug in the front of the, the grocery store. So I would go play it and stuff while my mom was shopping. <laughs> Like, there's still, like, claw machines and stuff, like, at the occasional friggin' supermarket and that sort of thing. But, nah, it's not really something that happened when I was growing up. It was more so, like, the, um, there will be, like, a demo of, like, a console or whatever, like, the new release thing is in, like, the middle of uh, Kmart or Big W. And it's like, you just go play that while your parents are shopping. Yeah, I, I had that, too. <laughs> I'm, I'm old. So, it was, like, ColecoVision and, and, and television and stuff. That's what was out when I was a kid. And I used to go like just wait in line at the the uh, the Kmart and <laughs> would play the games too. And just like wait for your parents. <laughs> Pretty much, right, they would come. They come. You yell, stay here. I'll be back. Exactly. And then that's like right before it's my time to go play. They're like my parents. Like it's time to go. I'm like no, I'm yeah. almost there. <laughs> yep. I am um, freaking. Oh, dude. So many many years ago, like when I was in maybe third grade, fourth grade, second grade, something like that. Um. I finally got to play on the console that was there, and I'm like, cool, I get to play. And turns out I got called over the loud system, and I didn't realize that I was being called because nobody could find me. <laughs> so I thought I'd been kidnapped. And, oh, boy, that was an interesting car ride. <laughs> you were one of those kids, like, uh, will the parents of... Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, they, well, has anybody in this store seen blah, 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 blah? It's like... Um, just can't hear you. <laughs> I'm a little like, busy right now. <laughs> All right, so let's get more into your wrestling fandom. So you get you remember the Undertaker, and then you have the King of the Ring. Did you ever get like really hardcore, like die hard, watch every week, every minute of every single thing of wrestling? Um, yeah, I did during like my early stages of high school because um. It's just the go-to thing that like everyone seemed to do at that stage. And um, who was sorry, I mean, was like? Did they have like the T-shirts and stuff down there as well that you guys had in Australia? Ah, uh, yeah, but you still had to like order them from the website, which shipping all that stuff is a prick unless you get the counterfeit stuff off of eBay. Was that a thing down there? Like people buying the bootleg stuff? Uh, it was for me <laughs> 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 because um. Once I got a job, oh boy, I had a, I had things I could buy. First time having money was great. <laughs> so wrestling was kind of, because in the States sometimes, I don't know if it was the same way in Australia, like people hid their fandom, their wrestling fandom. They kind of like, you were the, like when I was in high school, I, I'll kind of compare it to that. You know, that I was known as the guy that liked wrestling a whole lot. And it was like me and like two other guys. We weren't outcasts or anything, but we were just like known as the wrestling guys. It wasn't like a big broad thing. Is it kind of the same way down there? It was pretty much everybody, like, not everybody, but more than a couple of dudes were kind of into it. Um, no, it was kind of a niche thing, but I wasn't really, like, one to hide what I like. I've got no shame. Yeah, we had so much gang problems here. We couldn't wear, like, we had to wear, like, certain clothes and stuff. We couldn't wear, like, uh, sports teams hats or, like, wrestling shirts. We couldn't do anything like that when I was in high school. We had to... Like, not wear uniforms, but we had to like, wear, like, plain, plain stuff because the gang problem was not so good here. See, you're um in the States, though. Like, you guys get to wear casual clothes to school, though, don't you? Like, to a, to a certain extent. Yes. Yeah, we don't have to wear uniforms, things like that. Yeah, no, because, like, Australia's always got uniforms. Like, um even, like, back in friggin' primary school or first, like, I don't know what you guys call it over there, but, like, the first uh, few stages of school here like it's kindergarten through to grade six and then you go to high school which is grade seven through 12. what we have here is elementary school it's k through six and then middle school seventh and eighth and sometimes ninth grade and then high school right because um you know like uh even like in friggin preschool dude which um 
is the four, which I'm assuming is just like daycare or something. Um, like you've even got to worry uniform for that. So all through, like e- even like a senior in high school, you had to wear uniforms. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I would hate yeah. that. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> I spent a lot of my time in year eight not at school uh, because <laughs> I was suspended most of the time. But um, yeah, no, it was um. I guess for doing I, for doing crotch chops to the teachers and stuff, or what were you getting suspended for? I don't want to go into it. All right. <laughs> now, look, um, just a lot of it was wrong place, wrong time, and then I decided that seeing as though I've been like friggin' marked as one of those people, like they kept trying to give me after school detentions and that sort of thing. So I would skip them, and then it would just like lead to freaking being suspended for two days. So I would have like a three day week at school, then I would skip the after school detention again and just rinse and repeat for like the third, like the layout of last two thirds of year eight. I'm sure your parents in- uh, appreciated that. Um, Mum didn't care because I explained what the situation. No, oh, that's good. So, um, so Aust- Australian humor is a little bit different than um, American humor, right? What what Australian people or what do you think help mold your sense of humor? Uh, my family, mostly. Like, my brother's a very funny person. Also an asshole, but he's a <laughs> very, very funny guy. And it kind of rubbed off on you as well? Yeah, like, I'm nowhere near as funny as he is, but yeah. Pretty funny. Yeah, depends on perspective, I guess. <laughs> So uh, one thing I like to talk to people about from other countries is uh, TV shows that I happen to know about their countries. Uh, and you're going to bring neighbors, aren't you? Oh, 100%. So when I, was, when, I was in, when I was living in Europe again, I had the BBC. And when Neighbors came on, it was like the biggest thing ever that they actually got that famous Australian TV show, Neighbors. Wait, so, did, like that was on TV in the UK? Yeah. That's insane. And it was a it was a oh. big deal when it premiered on there. Really? Well, I think because Kylie Minogue was like singing the locomotion song and stuff too. <laughs> oh god. I'd love to bring up like embarrassing, terrible local treats from countries. Is that what you call that? Oh, it's a treat for us. Well, I guess your like country is not the one being represented by that awful thing. <laughs> so yeah, it's a treat. <laughs> You know what's funny? I used to like I used to memorize I had memorized the the neighbor's song because like in the summertime when I was home, you know, no school, my mom watched it and I would like and neighbors become, become good, good friends. friends. Yeah. So wait, were, were you in Europe at like when you were younger or like were you there as an adult? I was there seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. Right. So you're a little bit of a world traveler in the regard of like where you've lived. Well, no, I mean, it was San Diego for most of my life, like my, until like from kindergarten to, to sixth grade, and then three years away to Europe and one year in Virginia, then back in San Diego again. So we always returned. My, my father's in the Navy, U.S. Navy. So um, we, we were raced out of San Diego. We kind of went away for a few years, but we came back to San Diego. Ah, so dad was in the, um, the Army. So like we also moved around a fair bit. Oh, did you? Yeah, like where I am now is like the longest I've ever stayed was somewhere which is like 10 years. Did you enjoy traveling around and seeing other places or was it kind of hard for school and stuff? Um, yeah, no, it was kind of hard for school and stuff because like by the time you finally get to fit in, like you get the new posting and then you've got to move out again. And yeah. No, I, I told totally... you. Yeah, you. Yeah, you get it. <laughs> Completely. Yeah, because I went from eighth grade or ninth grade. I did in eighth grade. I did in Belgium. No, ninth grade in Belgium, tenth grade in Virginia, eleventh grade in San Diego. So three schools in three years. So it was pretty rough. Almost heaven. No wait. <laughs> yeah, West Virginia. <laughs> uh, All right. So tell me about how, when you finally got hardcore into wrestling. Tell me about uh, who caught your eye. What? Why you became a a big fan, and and what made you want to want to watch every week. Who caught my eye is a very interesting question because I liked a bunch of people. Like, I liked Triple H. I liked Edge. I liked... See, this is like 2007, 2008 sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So, I liked them. I liked um, Jeff Hardy, who at the time, uh, it was his rise to the top of the company. 
which unfortunately also means it was like midway through the scene of Reign of Terror. That was great. Um, yeah, like just the popular people, like Mysterio and all that, like they just did things I'd never seen before. And I guess that's like how it works for everybody. Like you just, something catches your eye and then you just kind of become obsessed, like it becomes an obsession. And then you go back and you watch older stuff and yeah. So did you ever try to become like a smart fan, like reading stuff on the internet and spoilers and things like that? Um, after like the first year or so I did. And then I realized how much I hated certain people. <laughs> Which Because you know the backstory? Yeah. And yeah. like how much power they've actually got backstage and all that sort of thing, yeah. Do you kind of wish you you never knew that stuff? You never saw that stuff? Nah. Nah. Because like, you're always like figure out fairly quickly that there's something going on. Like, it's not yeah, you know what I'm trying to say, right? Like, it's, yeah, you're, you're always fairly, yeah. Like, there's always something going on. Like, there's always something, and then like one week you'll see one person, and the next week you'll like they'll disappear, and you're like, what happened to that guy? And then like you end up researching it, and then you find out more information, and then it just becomes one of those things where like once you find out all this stuff, like you just kind of can't go back to watching normally. Yeah, because sometimes I wish, like, it, they say ignorance is bliss, right? So you, like, watch those old, like, uh, Jim Crockett shows, and, like, the crowds are just going berserk, you know, at the, like, when the Rock and Roll Express walks out or whoever it is, you know? And those people didn't have internet. Those people didn't know backstories. Those guys didn't know that probably Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson were the biggest jerks in the world. I'm not saying they are, but I'm using them as an example. You know, that they were jerks, and, you know, they were backstage politicking and stuff like that. It just, I don't know. Sometimes I wish that I'd never... I, I didn't know the background stuff and, and could un- enjoy it more. Did that ruin your fandom? It impacted it for sure. I'm still a fan, but it in- impacted. I watch it way different now than I did when I was a kid. And and I don't know if that's, I don't know if it's better or worse, but it's, it's different. Yeah, not for sure. Cause you know, like in, like in uh, Joshi wrestling, you know, we'll, we'll jump ahead a little bit, you know, to Joshi wrestling that, you know, we don't know a whole lot what goes on backstage. You know, it's, yeah. it's very, it's very hidden from us. You're absolutely right. And that's like kind of why I find it fascinating because like as much as we know, there's like so much more that we don't. Yeah. It's for they hold their cards uh, tight to the, their chest. You know, they don't, they don't let stuff out too, too often. So I, I honestly think that's why I, I enjoy Joshi wrestling more than, than a lot of other things is because. I don't know the backstage stuff. You know, you hear rumors here and there and this and that, but we, we really don't know. It's also why I like New Japan's one of my favorite promotions because, like, same kind of thing. Like, they treat it so well that you just don't know really what's going on. So did you ever discover, like, indie wrestling in Australia? Uh, no. Um, like, there's promotions. Like, I know of them, but, like, I've never ventured to, like, follow anyone in particular. Until, like, recently when I've met uh, Joel. Mm-hmm. Like, I know of people, like, I know of Gino Gambino, I know of, like, Robbie Eagles, I know of all those guys, but, like, it's not really something I've had my finger on the pulse of. And it's something like a smaller show, an intimate show like that, never really interested you? Like, there's not one close to where I am, so, like, I'm sure mm. if there was a local promotion, I would have been more into it, but because I'm not in a big city, like there's not really many opportunities besides like the cheap sort of sideshowy sort of ones that come through here, like once every couple of years. Hmm. Like, you know, the ones that like, you have that person who like dresses up as Kane or something. (laughs) Kane with a C. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's gotta be Kane. (laughs) And he's walking out with a cane in his hand. (laughs) Yeah. And like a pimp jacket and we call him pimp Kane. (laughs) Dude, so that, that, that sounds like an awesome creation. Someone needs to draw that now. Yeah, we need to, you need to have it uh, chibi created of that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be the weirdest thing I've had created. I've got freaking eight ski drawn in like a biker outfit. <laughs> <laughs> so when did podcasting, when did podcasting enter your life? Um, podcasting entered my life around the same time as wrestling did. Um, I used to be, super interested into a web series called red versus blue i don't know if you've heard of it or not i haven't tell me about it um so do you know what machinima is or do you not know what machinima is i have no idea what that is okay machinima is uh when you use a game engine like for an example halo gears of war or whatnot um to essentially 
tell a story. So like they used um, Halo to like have all the characters. So like you can distinguish who's who by the color of the armor. Um, and they told like just stories with that. Like they, they made a very good comedy series out of it. And it's like one of my favorite things to just go back and like binge watch. Cause it is one of the dumbest things I've seen that just works. So and then, we, like, they had a podcast. Um, the company that did that um, was called Rooster Teeth, and they had a podcast. I've heard of uh, them. Called, I've heard of them, yeah. Called, yeah, they had a podcast called Drunk Tank. And Drunk Tank was – it was it was enjoy- very enjoyable for my young mind at that time, learning all the things I probably shouldn't. So what what other podcasts – was it a certain – a certain genre of podcast you enjoy? Did you enjoy talk shows at all? Or what were you, what were you kind of, what, what um, kind of built? Because I mean, people listen to one podcast and then all of a sudden they're listening to 50 podcasts. You know what I mean? So I started with Rooster Teeth. From there, I went to Internet Box, um, which was essentially another Rooster Teeth sort of one, but like it was the younger people from the company um, and like fans of them. And it was more of an indie promotion sort of thing, I guess. But um, yeah, like I just, and then I just stopped listening to podcasts for a while. And then I found some wrestling ones, which were covering the SmackDown six and some other stuff. And then kind of things are just going from there. Were they American podcasts or Australian podcasts? Uh, the one that covered the SmackDown six was actually Canadian. <laughs> oh, who, who was that? Um, uh, the Federation. So okay. there are two brothers who live in the middle of Canada somewhere. I'm not sure. Uh, and they just, yeah, they just spoke wrestling. <laughs> What what inspired you to want to actually do your own podcast? Um, at the time, I just felt like I wanted to do it. Like I met my buddy Corey at a New Japan show uh, when they came through here a few years ago, and we just like became good friends. And we just thought stuff it one day. We're just going to press record and see what happens. And what happened? Well, that's how Smack It Down was born. <laughs> <That's what laughs> Tell Tell us about Smack It Down. What is what is Smack It Down? If, we, if people haven't heard it before, let's sell sell them on Smack It Down. Okay, so Smack It Down is a train wreck. <laughs> um, now, look, Smack It Down, it's going through a little bit of a change at the moment. We have a new host in there who is actually an Australian wrestler uh, named Joel Bateman. He does a lot of hardcore stuff. So we're currently looking through the history of ECW pay-per-views and seeing what went wrong with the company towards the end of that. And that's been really interesting. We're also trying to get uh, some of the Australian indie people on here who people may not have heard of uh, to try to get them a little bit more known throughout the community. So that people can keep an eye on some up and coming stars. So like we've had Lucille Brawl on a couple weeks ago. We had Bobby Bishop on this week. I don't know who's on this week because the person who's supposed to be coming on is kind of big league to me. Which I'm guessing you probably get a fair bit. Oh, all the time. So I'm trying to find someone to come on uh, this week. And then next week, if all goes as planned, we should be getting Jessica Troy. Oh, nice. Who um, is actually on the rise over here. She works for, I think, PWA Black Label, which is one of the bigger Australian indies between like that and MCW. So do, do fans in Australia, wrestling fans in Australia, do they follow? Like, you know, Cal's. Do they follow the Australian wrestlers that go abroad and kind of, be kind of like follow their careers and kind of see where they're going? To be honest with you, I don't know. How about you? Do you do you, do you like after, but... do you like try to follow the iconics and stuff to see what they're doing? God no, I hate those people. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be kidding me! Ah, uh, dude, they are so bad. Their characters piss me off because, like, <laughs> I feel like it's just it's so over the top, and I know that's the point. But, like, there's just something about the way they talk that makes me angry. Your accents? I mean, it's my accent, so no, it's not that. <laughs> the fact that maybe I just feel like they're, um, and I know this is the point of the thing, but it's like, I, I just feel like that WWE is, like, making Australian stereotypes and it's pissing me off. <laughs> what, Outback Jack wasn't enough of a <laughs> stereotype? No, because, like, essentially what the Iconics are is just, like, the freaking people you'll see down the street who like just think they're better than everyone and like just talk down on people, which I'm guessing happens everywhere. But in Australia, dude, it's just so freaking annoying. And like it's their voices, it's everything about the whole act. Are are all Australian girls that pretty? 
I mean, no, or all American girls as pretty as someone that you like an Alexa Bliss? Yes, every single one of them. Oh, okay, so yeah, no, not every Australian girl is that pretty. <laughs> I love the Iconics. I, probably, if, if <laughs> I, I probably would hate them if I was Australian, but as an American, I, I think they're brilliant. I think they're just so goofy and silly and stuff, and like you said, over the top. I I, I enjoy them. Their wrestling is not great, but their 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 uh, their entertainment package, I think, I find entertaining. Yeah, look, as an entertainer, it's like, they're great at that. But as I said, I just feel like they're insulting their own country <laughs> because of how awful they are. So they're your, they're your uh, exports that everybody knows about right now, that they represent I, all of Australian wrestling. Why couldn't we have someone like Avery be our export? <laughs> so let's talk about uh, Avery. She went to um, stardom. And... She sure did. When she, did she your did five star? She I, had a showing. She did. No, she did. She did very well, actually. I think as far as in ring, you know, skill level and stuff, what she showed was wonderful. When she did you start? Uh, new to wrestling, though, so yeah, she did actually well, very well for what she did. Stardom actually brings people over really early in their careers, which is I, which I find interesting. You know, I mean, you you look back at their history and like Thunder Rosa and stuff, and other people that they brought on pretty early in their careers. You know, you're absolutely right, and it helps people, like, obviously get more known. It makes the, once again, the wrestling bubble spread. So when did you, when did you discover Japanese wrestling? Like, in general, or, like... Yeah, in general. Originally. Because, like, originally, like, ages ago. <laughs> but, like, it wasn't until, like, one of the Wrestle Kingdoms, like, of the past few years, like, I really started following anything. And it was like way later than that that I started trying to check out Joshi because I tried watching Stardom for a while, but it's just something that I couldn't get into. Mm -hmm. And then uh, actually Arisa, Arisa Hoshiki, um, one of her matches just clicked with me. And then I kind of just became a fan of hers. And once you become a fan of one person in Joshi, like you just end up following a promotion and then things start spreading from there. <laughs> so you actually visited Japan. When when were you in Japan? You know, during what what months? What year? What what was it? I was in Japan at the start of this year, back in February. I went to a New Japan show at Corican Hall, and I went to Stardom's Road to Major League. How did you enjoy your trip, dude? The trip was fantastic. Like you know what Japan's like. It is, it's a magical place. That <laughs> it, yeah, it, it's just. The culture shock there is great. Like everything there that you can do that you can't do in like Australia, America, like it's just so interesting over there. And like you go there for a week and you still won't find everything that you can do. Like everything in your neighborhood, you know, like everything in general, like you can't, you can find things in your neighborhood you can't do in a week. Yeah. Like I was in AK Bukuro and I, um, one of the freaking shopping centers I had, dude, had an aquarium and a planetarium in it. And like, that was crazy to me. <laughs> Uh, so what were some of the, your favorite things about Japan and like some of the things you, you tried and, and did and stuff that you enjoyed over there? So, hey, okay, this is going to sound really, really basic and I don't care because it was freaking delicious. Have you been to the curry house, uh, Ichi, Ike, Ike something Coco? Yes. Dude, how good is that place? Oh, it's so good. It's so good. And like ever since I've come back from Japan, I just want more curry and I can't get it here. I don't. I didn't like curry until I had it over there, and now yeah, I, that's now exactly enjoy. the same as me too. Like someone's like, you got to go here. I'm like, I don't really like curry. And they're like, no, no, no. You trust me on this. You go there. It's like, oh my god, where has this been my whole life? <laughs> so uh, I told you about something, uh, a special drink they have over in Japan called the Strong Zero. You are an awful person. <laughs> Strong Zero <laughs> is poison and should not be consumed by anybody. <laughs> So I think you and I had conversations while you were in the middle of enjoying some strong zeros, and uh, then I didn't hear from you for a while. Yeah, I wonder why that is. <laughs> Tell people what strong zeros are. Uh, strong zero is a very potent alcohol uh, that has zero sugar, and if you have more than like two of them, will mess your day up. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had it at like 10 in the morning, because like AEW was about to come on, and I'm like, stuff are cool. Go down to 7-Eleven, which, by the way, 7-Eleven's like the greatest shop ever over there. 
um, get some friggin' alcohol out of the fridge, and it's just like so cheap. And that's like the worst part about it because you go in there, <laughs> you spend like ten bucks, you walk out with like four cans, and then your days just gone. <laughs> So talk about your wrestling experience over in Japan. You say you went to a New Japan show? I did. I went to a New Japan show, which was just um, one of their Road 2 shows. It was right before New Beginnings uh, in, I think it was New Beginnings in Osaka. Um, while I was there, I got to meet Minoru Suzuki for the second time. I love that guy. You went to a store? No, I didn't go to a store. I, I, oh. I was going to go to the Palder Rob store, but I didn't know I'm going, which kind of sucks. But... Yeah, no, I met Minoru Suzuki there. I um, got to sing along to Kazan in Array in Japan, which was awesome. <laughs> um, so what was your impressions of Kirk and Hall when you went there? Okay, so how many times have you been to Korokin Hall and what promotions have you been to Korokin for? Because I know you've been there a couple of times at least. I've seen Stardom there three times. I've seen... I've seen some men's promotions there. I've seen Wave there. I've seen Seedling there. So I've seen I've seen men and women's promotions. I've probably been there seven times, eight times maybe. So when you went there for like the men's promotions and the women's promotions stuff was because like New Japan and Stardom, like the way they had their merch and stuff set up, like it was just so different. I'm yeah, not so sure you, if like the Wave you, stuff and that sort of thing was like the same kind of thing or if like it was, yeah. Well, like Stardom has that the back room, right? That it's not like the, the main little hallway. Did they, did they have the, the merch in the back, that little back room on the other side of the elevators? Uh, yes. Which I also think is where new Japan had their stuff, but like the way that new Japan had it set up, um, was way different to how freaking stardom had it set up. So this, the smaller promotions that I went and saw, they just do the, um, merch like in the hallway, like right by this, where the snack bars are at and stuff. Right. That's where they had a bunch of tables and people set up out there. They didn't have that whole back room open. There was some marvelous stuff set up there at the um, Sodom show was out because of the Takumi match that was there. Yeah, and they, I think they allow other promotions to come sell uh, yeah, tickets to shows and stuff like that as well. So I think they, they're kind of just a, an open, kind of friendly, you know, help each other out kind of thing. Yeah, that makes sense. But um, yeah, like that whole back room, though, like with the New Japan show, like it was just filled with um, like just shirts and table like just shirts tables caps um like just all your generic like wrestling merchandise i um bought a los and governables day upon hat because i'd always wanted one and every time new japan's come to australia i miss them hmm. um like as in that particular piece of merchandise i've been to all the shows that they've had but um did they have the guys in there too uh there was only two of them there like there was a meet and greet for um if you wanted to pay for it there was a meet and greet for tiger hitori hmm. uh, which i didn't do because like I, I like Tiger Hitori. Like, he's a great referee, and he's retired now, which kind of sucks because he's always been around. But um, they had a sort of like a mini table set up where if you bought a particular piece of merchandise from either Suzuki or Dookie, I'm pretty sure is his name, Doki, Dookie, something like that, uh, they would sign it for you and like you'd have a, get to have a quick conversation with them. So that's how I got to meet Suzuki again, and I bought his CD with his entrance music on it because, in my opinion, Kaze Nina Ray is, like, the best wrestling intro, <laughs> like, wrestling theme. Like, if you've heard it, you would know what I'm talking about. Maybe I'll have to play a clip to, to open the show. Yeah, that's that's a very good idea. Um, so, yeah, I got to meet him. Uh, he did, did he speak English to you? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> I told him that I met him when he came down here a couple of years ago for his, on the Australian tour, and he... He's like, oh yeah, that's cool. Um, like he, I'm get, yeah. He was nice because I gave him money, but Suzuki's a very scary man. I've met him at a store, and he knows a little bit of English. Yeah, he didn't really speak much to me in English, yeah. but um, and then like at, at the Sardom show, as you would know, like the friggin' merch lines there, dude, like they're terrible. Like you go there, you pay for your eight by ten or whatever it is you're gonna get, and then you wait the entire show. And I didn't know this at the time that I wouldn't get the opportunity after the show to i i because uh, i misinformed you because that was new because when i was there in september that's not what they did yeah so yeah the merch lines like there you like you pay for your thing at the start um post show the merch lines are packed up um and then you have to essentially 
like wait in line to get whatever it is you bought signed from the girls. And like you said, that was different to when you were there. And what wrestlers did you want to meet when you were there? Who, so, who were like, who were like your list, your like dream list? I wanted to meet Konami because she's the one that got me the tickets. Cause I thought that was the right thing to do. And you told me to um, get a two shot or get an eight by 10 and like give them something small as a gift from your country, mm-hmm. which is what yeah. I did. I gave her a koala bookmark. How'd that work out? Uh, she actually liked it, and she freaked out because had a koala on it. It was kind of adorable. <laughs> but um, I so I bought one from Mayu, one from Konami. It also had a jung- uh, jungle on there, and I got one from Tam. And I thought that, like I said, post-show, I was going to get the opportunity to buy more because I wasn't exactly sure how everything worked uh, to get Narisa. But I missed out on that because you misinformed me, <laughs> and it's all your fault. I feel I, honestly, I feel bad because I, I was trying to like, give you hints and what to do and stuff to make the most of your 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 opportunity, you know. And and I felt terrible once you told me that. It's fine. Look, it's a learning experience. It's absolutely fine. Um, Mayu uh, had her ass kicked in the main event of that show by Takumi and <laughs> was selling her injuries post show, which was kind of awesome. <laughs> I don't know whether or not like um, Hana or any of the other girls that you had there did that when you were there. They did. They were they were holding their necks and stuff, and I, which I I pre- they're probably really hurt. They're probably not even <laughs> they're probably not even trying to keep with the storyline. They're probably actually like physically harmed. <laughs> like, dude, Mayu was sitting down. Like the rest of the girls were standing up. Like when you got to that stuff, like Mayu was sitting down because like when I watched her get up to do a two shot, like she was limping, and I'm like, hey, this she's really selling this, or she's actually hurt. <laughs> and after like going back and watching the Takumi match, it could be either one. <laughs> Takumi's amazing. Takumi's great. Um, actually, that's kind of surprising me too because like they didn't have any of the Marvelous Girls there post show, which I thought would have been a missed opportunity there for like them to try to get new fans because I know that a lot of the um, Japanese like the go there for certain people are kind of loyal to one promotion. Well, Takumi wasn't the original main event though, right? No, I was supposed to be sorry. And then she pulled out the last second. Yeah, she was sick or something, which, like, at the time that I was over there, was, like, the start of the whole corona thing. You think she was really sick, or you think she just pulled out? Uh, well, it turns out that she's signed with the WWE, so who actually knows? Yeah. So what was, your, what was your experience, like, as far as stardom? Was it what you expected it to be? Was it better than you expected as far as the, the show and stuff? No, like, it was really good. I thoroughly enjoyed the show. Um, I'm happy that I got to see... A re- like essentially a Reese's last big match considering mm-hmm. she was my favorite um, kind of sucks what happened with her but you know injuries are a bitch mm-hmm. um, that main event was amazing like I said uh, I got to see your girl your your favorite wrestler from stardom uh, Julia win the trios titles I love Julia I love 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 Julia yeah sure you do <laughs> um oh. Dare you? Yeah, look, as I said, um, the Stardom show was great. Like, I recommend anybody who likes any Joshi promotion, any promotion in general, like, if you get the opportunity to go to Corican Hall for, like, any show, do it, because that place has, like, a vibe unto itself. Like, there's friggin' people have written on the walls, like, to say that they've been in, in Corican, like, on the way up the stairwells. Um, like, the building itself, like, it's on the fifth floor of, a, like, some office complex or something, which is really weird to me. But, Corican dude, like you know this as for yourself, like it, it it's just its own beast. Yeah, it's it's an amazing place to go to, amazing place to see a show. Yeah, for sure. So, do you have a different perspective on Stardom now that you saw it live, or you kind of just yeah? I do. I have a lot more. Like, I'm not going to have a lot more respect for them, but like, I respect what they do a hell of a lot more than. I did her initially because like seeing it live and like versus video on demand, like you don't realize just how much the girls actually end up doing like around ringside around just everything in general. Like they're always doing something like they don't get to stop. Like you think once their match is over, they get to go hang out backstage, but like a lot of the time they'll come back out and they'll be ring seconds or they will be helping set up things in between matches. And yeah, it's crazy. It, yeah, I, I find that so fascinating too to watch the the girls that like pull the streamers out and they like, slide in real fast and slide out real fast and stuff too. I think it's I think it's a, a cool thing to watch. 
Yeah, also Starlight Kid, dude, she, um, you think that it's like a multiple people talking and screaming at people, but no, it's just Starlight. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just Starlight. Starlight so did, is like the one that you always hear. <laughs> so after watching Stardom and going to a Stardom show, what, why did you start, because I know you, I know you, Jay, so what, what made you want to start branching out to watching other uh, Joshi promotions? There's a lot more people out there that I just haven't seen. And as much as I like stardom, um, we're currently in a period where there is no stardom. Mm-hmm. So I've wanted to continue watching Joshi. And with that, I've gone and watched Marvelous. I've gone and watched Macros. I've tried Ice Room, in which Nico Pro is not a very good website, is it? I'm not a fan. Neither am I. Um, but, you know, like there's just like a bunch out there. I'm like, just because you follow one promotion, like as I said before, like a lot of, that's what a lot of the Japanese fans do. Like you're going to miss out on a bunch of people that if you're only going to stick with one promotion, you're not going to be able to see. Yeah. And I, and I think the, the watching the one promotion is a very, a very Japanese thing. I mean, there's some people that go watch all these. I mean, I see, I've gone to a few different promotions in Japan. I've seen the same people there at some of the promotions, but there's other people where they only watch wave or they only watch seedling or they only watch stardom. I think it's because they have so much wrestling over there, they can't follow it all. Yeah, that's true. Like, looking at looking at what I watch now, like, I watch friggin' AEW. I occasionally still watch WWE with, um, like, about once a month, whenever they do a pay-per-view, like, mum will come around and we'll go watch that. Because um, that's just something that's always happened. Friggin' Stardom, New Japan. God, progress when that's back. Friggin' just as a a wxw that's a bunch of stuff i'm still watching when i started my podcast i I wanted it to be like part interview part like news and like results and things like that but i just realized there's way too much stuff i had to kind of just dump dump the the segments of me like reviewing shows and stuff like that because there's just there's just way too much Oh, it's been easy for you to do lately there's been nothing 100 (laughs) percent. one show a week it's been real easy You don't have to like decide which one you get to do. You don't really have a choice. Like I'm going to do this one. So while you're in Japan, I, I know the stories, but I want you to share your stories. Um, you, there's a store called T- Totocon. Tell me oh, about boy. your. Tell me about how much money you left at Totocon. I went to Japan with a salary of I think two, three hundred bucks a day, and that's like more than enough to like spend money on food, more than enough to just like get around like still do touristy stuff if you choose to. And then you suggest that I go to Totocon. <laughs> and oh boy, isn't that a place that you can waste a lot of money? <laughs> Eric? <laughs> I bought... But you had to go. You had to go. Yeah, you're right. And I went there like two other times after you told me to go there the first time. <laughs> because like you go in there and like you find things and then you're like, oh man, I didn't go through this section of the store. And then you go back there and you find more things. And then on the third time I went there, they told me that there was this friggin' folder just filled with like Joshi autographs. I'm like, great. So now I've got to go through that. Explain to them, explain to people that don't know on uh, that are listening what Totocon is. Okay, so Totocon is essentially a it's a wrestling it's a wrestling store. Like they've got uh, like in ring worn stuff from like friggin' Liger, like they had some stuff there from uh, I've forgotten who it is, but she currently works for AEW. Um, one of her in ring gear that she wore for Stardom or Neo, I don't remember which one it was. Um, they've got like portraits and stuff there from like people signed. They've just like anything wrestling, pretty much, they've got there. And pretty much, if it's not worth finding, they don't have it. <laughs> yeah, they have like records and magazines and all kinds of like, VHS DVDs, tapes. And DVDs, yeah. yeah, I bought um bought a best of Kari Hojo friggin' DVD while I was in there um, to watch some of her pre NXT stuff. And Oh boy, I still do not like the way she runs the ropes. <laughs> so you, your experience to Japan was, was all positive, right? Because we, we've talked about it a few times privately that it was just a, an amazing experience. Correct. And I plan on going back next year. If I'm able to currently, I don't think anyone's allowed to leave Australia. Yeah, I'm not even sure they accept you right now in Japan. I heard that they're, like, for business travelers to let them in, but besides that, they really won't let people in the country. Yeah. Also, according to one of my friends who lives over there, um, it turns out that they, 
reason that they've kind of cleared most of the corona is because they're not testing people for corona. Yeah. Because when I was there, like, right right at the end, right before everything shut down, I mean, I literally left, like, two days before their shutdown. And, and I was there, like, right before it all kicked off. Yeah. And there was, I mean, there was not, I mean, people wear masks over there, right? But there was no extra people wearing masks. I mean, I was in... Um, in the, the the touristy parts of the the town and the, the bars and restaurants and stuff, there was the young people were not wearing masks. Yeah, no. Nah. Um, <laughs> you went to the Osterman show and they're like, "Yeah, you yeah, you're fine, come in." Yeah. <laughs> so you and I need to go over there together sometimes because I think it'd be a whole lot of fun. Yeah, no, it will be. Um, imagine like all the shenanigans we'll get up to. Oh yeah, I yeah. So uh, you said Smack It Down had uh, recently undergone a change. You had uh, Joel join the show. Um, I've listened to the show before. I listened to the show now with, with Joel. I, I think you guys were doing uh, tremendous work before, but I think Joel adds a uh, a different element to the show that that I think uh, is kind of unique for, for your podcast. Yeah, it's unique in the regard that, like, I don't know of any other wrestling podcasts, like besides obviously some of the bigger ones that like have a wrestler on there with like essentially just fans of wrestling. So like, you're, gave, are you the, are you the Australian Conrad Thompson? No, <laughs> <But> like <laughs> you're right. He gives a perspective on things that like with us watching ACW and him himself being a hardcore wrestler, like in his own words, he, he talks about things on there that like, I didn't even think of and just the whole different perspective that's brought to the show is really interesting. And I'm like I, forward to Corey and myself. Tell, tell us about Corey. Tell, tell, tell the people about Corey. Uh, Corey's an asshole and he's currently a ghost. <laughs> he dis- disappeared but, on um, you or what? Uh, that's overly complicated. Um, apparently I just, it's some stupid ongoing story that he's made up for himself. I honestly don't know what's going on. <laughs> but apparently he's dead. Rest in peace, Corey. Pretty much. <laughs> no, but I, I really enjoy your guys' podcast. And I, I enjoy Joel uh, being a, the addition to the podcast. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's great for Joel to to do a show like this because um, the fan, the wrestling fan wrestler relationship, even though I think it's improved, I still think a lot of wrestlers still have the mark mentality of you know they they don't want to talk to the marks or be around the marks. So I think it's great that Joe, you guys are talking to Joel and, and getting him on and, and having him share. I think, I, I think like I said before, it's unique, but I also think it's, it's really fun to hear, you know, a wrestling fan talk to a wrestler. See, Joel also, like, ultimately, he's a fan at heart still. Like, he still watches things for his own enjoyment. He's not one of those people who gave up on wrestling when he became a wrestler. Like That's, he still goes out of his way to watch things and learn like more things that he doesn't know. Yeah. he doesn't sound bitter on the show or anything like that at all. He sounds like a, a real fun guy. And yeah, no, he is. He's, um, he, he's, he's a very, he's a very good dude. So are you going to venture out from your, the outback or wherever you live at and go, I'm kidding. Are you going to go visit, uh, and see Joe, uh, Joe Russell at all? Uh, he's having a match coming up in July, but that's in Melbourne and I'm not in Melbourne. <laughs> How far? Uh, uh, my ge- ge- Australian geography is garbage. So how far would Melbourne long be from where you live at? Long enough for me to have to make it a day trip. Really? Yeah. Which like, don't get me wrong. Like I, I want to go down and make Joel hang out with him, have a beer and stuff. But um, at the same time, like I'm not comfortable at this point in time with everything that's going on. Mm-hmm. Like I know that Australia is in the process of opening back up, but at the same time, all it takes is for one person there to obviously have the Heineken flu. And <laughs> then, you know, that's another friggin' two weeks in lockdown, potentially getting sick and yeah. So right, not Jay- something I feel comfortable doing at the moment. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I would go to a live show right now either. I won't lie to you. I, I probably would <laughs> rather wait a little while before, you know, t- to see what happened. I wouldn't want to be the, I wouldn't be the one in the front of the line trying to get out there and see if I can not catch coronavirus. Yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts on the matter. All right. So again, tell us about Smack It Down. Tell us where we can find you on social media. Uh, so like I said before, um, Smack It Down is currently 
uh, we are going through ECW, uh, the pack of views and some of the TV specials, which turns out were crappy and we're not doing them anymore. <laughs> um, with Joel and like, we're just going through all that. Um, we are trying to get, like I said before, uh, one lesser known Australian indie on the show so they can tell us a bit about themselves and hopefully try to find some new people to check out some Australian wrestling. And you can find me on social media at uh, the Viva Lajadi, which is spelt um, T H E V I V A L A J A D Y, or uh, the Smack It Down pod has just um, been relaunched on Twitter, which is um, at S I D underscore pod. Yeah, and everybody, I would encourage you, you follow them on Twitter, listen to their podcast. It's a whole lot of fun. They, they enjoy, they're, they're really enjoying themselves when uh, they're sitting around just shooting the bull. And it's a, uh, you guys say shooting the bull down in Australia too? No, no, we don't. <laughs> oh, it's like, it's like shooting the bullshit, you know? You guys are just. Buddy's bullshit. Oh yeah, each okay. other. yeah, we do, we do. In that regard, we do. But like the way you said it, no, we don't. No, <laughs> yeah, no. But it's like just shooting. They, they shoot the bullshit together, and it's a whole lot of fun. And the uh, dynamic with Joel on there uh, makes it even better. So they they took a really good podcast, and I think it made it even better. And uh, yeah, follow Jay on Insta on uh, Twitter, and uh, follow the podcast. And uh, give him a subscribe. You know, J- uh, Jay's a real good guy. Uh, he and I are uh, friends. You know, we someday we're going to meet probably over in Japan and uh, hang out and have a good time together. But, uh, yeah, this is what this podcast is all about, introducing you guys to my friends. And uh, hopefully they can become your friends as well. Jay, I, w- I want to thank you for being on the podcast today. Anytime, dude. Thank you so Anytime. much. What, what, what time is it where you're at right now? Um... That is a very good question. We started this at 12. Uh, how long have we been going for? An hour? Yeah, about an hour. So it'll be about 1 o'clock like so in it's the like, afternoon. So it's like 8 p.m. It's 8 p.m. where I'm at right now. Nice, nice. See, and you have a crazy advantage, too, because like the shows the shows in Japan, the, the time difference isn't as crazy for you as it is for me. So it kind of sucks. Like Some of these shows start at 3 in the morning, 4 in the morning here, and you have it yeah, much Japan's better than Japan's like that. an hour behind us. Yeah, so that's like, perfect for you. And daylight savings is on like it's two hours, but yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, buddy. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. And guys, again, uh, follow me on Twitter at the Joshi Pod, And uh, we'll see you soon, everybody. Arigato gozaimasu.